Immigrants? Immigrants. You know, but, but didn't they have an immigration bill in place that Trump decided he didn't he didn't think was good for his political future? Didn't it, didn't the House come up with a plan? And then Trump is Don't the one to blame that blame Trump on um, Biden flooding these cities with immigrants and black people complaining. Yes, they're undermining the black community, flooding the zone with all of these illegal immigrants, sir. That's Who Biden. Is- it's not it, it, immigration's been an issue for fifty years. But it only Biden, becomes not, a, what Biden has just opened up the floodgates and Biden flooded has, black neighborhoods, and we the whole black community is complaining about this. What? what and where at? Where are they complaining? Because I, I live in a major. Angeles, I live in a major. Let me. Let me. New York, let, Atlanta, I live in, DC. Okay. We were we were in DC by the thousands complaining about it, sir. I live in a I live in a border state. Next to California, where do you and live? Just, in Arizona, we right. just don't see what you're talking about, man. Yeah, we don't see that. that. That and that's why Biden got beat down because y'all ain't seeing the truth. And the truth is, he's getting beat down with facts. And the Democrats what are struggling. Facts, right Tariq? Now. Now, hey, the granted, facts, Biden. Yes, that he no. hasn't done anything. The black community is disgruntled with Biden. He has Ooh, undermined the black gonna community. Still get, listen, he's going to no, steal. No, no, sir, okay. y'all, can, y'all can sit here and be in denial. He's up here looking stupid as hell for a reason. He doesn't have a base no more. The black community has abandoned Biden because he has Man, abandoned us. And he's no, up there looking stupid right no. now, sir. You say yes. that every yes. election cycle. You say that every, sele- every election cycle. They the always Trump, say the black people. Are, y'all are panicking. Why are y'all panicking right now? I'm not panicking. The Democrats are panicking. You you trying to act like you ain't panicking? The I'm Democrats not panicking. are panicking. The Democrats are saying we are in trouble tonight, sir. What are you talking if pe- about? If people are dumb enough to elect Donald Trump for a second time, then we deserve what we get. Because well, what we, I saw we, was a guy we, who lied every time he so what opened did you his get mouth. Out of Biden? What did you get out of Biden being in office? What do you mean, what did I get out of Biden? I, I don't expect the president to do anything specifically for me. Then what the hell are you complaining about then? I'm not complaining about anything. I'm just calling you a show because I just if didn't. If you don't want the president just, to do nothing for you, then what are you complaining about? I mean, I, I, what, what what do I have I, to complain I, I, what, about? What, nothing. What are you complaining about? I, I, just like, I just love to see the Democrats win. Is that it? Well, I would love to see them win as opposed to Donald Trump. Yeah. Sir, yes. What year were you born, sir? 1967, sir. Yes, indeed. Where is your family from? Well, we, we were born in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Where are they from? Well, we were born in Oklahoma. No, 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 no. Where is your family from? As far as historically? Where did they immigrate here from? Well, my grandfather was Ch- was my great grandfather was Choctaw. I'm not sure about my great grandmother. Okay, all right. Your great grandfather was Choctaw. Where did from they what I hear, from what I understand, but okay. only one side of my family came from Africa. If if that's what you're trying to get at. Okay, where'd the other side come from? Where, where, I, last our role showed he was Choctaw from Tennessee, Oklahoma, somewhere in that just. I'm not sure. Okay. You, if you're a foundational black American, you kind of know where they came from a little bit because Oklahoma, they would have only went to Oklahoma in the mid 1800s, the late 1800s. Yeah. Where did and, they, where were they my, my, my great, my grandfather was actually born in 1883. My family was his third family. His two previous wives had passed away. Right. So my grandfather was born in 1883 in Oklahoma. Right. However, we there's there's some you know we've done a little bit as much of a search as we could from Tennessee, Oklahoma, that particular area. But I'm not. I guess what's what's the point of that question? I'm just just trying to see what your background is. Because oh, okay. are you are you very, are you pro immigration? I just think that it, I'm trying to answer your question as best I can. I think that that becomes a real hot button issue around election time that Are nobody you th- pro immigration. I'm talking about you. I, I'm pro getting the if you if you send am I for rounding up 11 million people and trying to send them back? No, I'm not. If you hear you haven't committed a crime, we need to figure out who you are and go ahead and integrate you into our society because that's what you've been doing anyway. OK, so you're pro immigration. 
Yeah, I don't have a problem with immigration. So how do you feel about those resources used for non-citizens that black people can use? We could use those resources. How do you feel about I, us not getting those resources? Well, I, I don't know. Are we not getting them? Is that is that factually not happening? What resources are we getting specifically? I because haven't applied for any specific resource to get from the government is what I'm saying. So I don't know what we're not getting because I don't ask for anything. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm saying that I don't know for a fact that w I don't know what black people are not getting. I haven't heard enough black people come to me and say, hey, you know what? I went and applied for this and I didn't get this from the government, but an immigrant got it instead. I would hope that if black people are homeless like immigrants are, that they could go and have a place to stay at. But I'm not. You don't sure see all what... these homeless black people around the country. Yeah, I do. But I don't know if that if, if that coincides with us not getting something that we want. I don't know. Yeah, if, that I don't know if that's an apple to apple conversation, Tariq. I think that's more apple to you don't hear conversation. the reparations conversations. Oh, yeah, I want the I want I don't know if it's giving us such. I would like to see reparations in the form of us being able to get free education, being oh, able to get. I'm the first God, person. God damn it. OK, OK. Free education. Well, no, I'm saying free. I, I would like to see us be able to get like, for instance, if you want to trace it all the way back, the first thing we should have been given. We had land when we grew up. I knew enough to know my free grandfather. Education. had. Quite a, well, what What do you want when you say reparations? Do you just want a, a check? I mean, yeah. What, what, are the okay, I don't mind the check. I, are, the I don't, are, are the immigrants getting free education? When they, no, they're not. Get, they're getting checked. They're getting money the minute they get here. They're getting debit who, cards. Who, who, who told you? No, 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 but who told you? How, you? You're saying immigrants walk in and receive a check from the government. They getting debit cards when they get over here, dude. Or do are you not aware? No, I'm not aware. Okay, have a good day. I'm not gonna sit here and just talk to my who just don't know nothing. Good lord, this is your Democratic voter right here. Just don't know a damn thing. We don't know nothing. <laughs> this is your Democratic voter right here. The old Democratic voters right now don't be knowing nothing. I don't want nothing. That's that Jim Clyburn stuff. I I, I don't want nothing. <laughs> Why you gotta give me something? <laughs> Why? Who, you, just you being good, good white daddy is good enough for me. I don't need nothing. That's what Jim Clyburn said. What's wrong with these old civil right talking niggas? I'm like, what, what reparations? I the money. I don't want no dirty money. That Florida Evans shit. JJ, get this dirty money out this house. <laughs> that's why, that's not that Florida Evans shit. Y'all know good times. That was the thing that burned me about good times. Every time JJ and them would bring some money in there, Florida ass, uh oh, this money come from the streets. I don't want this dirty money, James. They hate it coming up. They hate money. It's like, where's white Jesus? God, y'all niggas kill me. This is why the Democrats are crashing and burning in front of our damn eyes right now, family. This is why that old shucking and job and plantation stuff is out, family. It's out. Brother Tariq, how are you, sir? Hey, what's going on? Uh, a couple of things I got to say. I think, you know, CNN purposely turn off the mics for this debate. Uh, I don't know if anyone had caught that because um, they wanted to make sure that, you know, once uh, any of the presidents uh, finished their statement that they will just turn the mic off so they won't over talk the other person. I okay. guess that was a way to try to, I guess, slow down Trump, but clearly that wasn't even a factor in, in this particular uh, debate. Okay. Uh, Biden was cooked. He was malfunctioning like a robot. Yes, he was. He, he clearly looked like he needed to sleep. I, I I kept asking myself, why then they gave him Red Bull during during each break time or whatever? Because he oh. just looked he looked crazy. He looked he crazy did. up there. And like you know, everyone keeps saying, "Oh, Trump is lying about whatever," right? But this is a debate. I don't think anyone cares if Trump has sex with a porn star or not. I don't think anyone. Right. Really, that ain't, I don't that think ain't really. Whatever. Yeah, but see, this is the thing that the, the Democrats got to watch out for. If you bring up those allegations, then what is Trump going to do? He's going to hit you with the haymaker and bring up Hunter Biden. Exactly. He's going to bring up Hunter Biden, and that's his kryptonite right now. Exactly. Real talk. And let me, let me, yeah, let me hold on. I got a Democratic shield in here I want to get in here. Loss, get in here. This is a Democratic shield. Loss, let me hear it. I, I got to hear y'all spin this. 
Loss? Yeah, so... Uh, let me, let's hear you spin this. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, let me hear it. Please so, try to spin this so, train wreck we saw tonight. Go ahead. You know, so I, I, I don't... You know, I was a undecided voter prior to the night. Um, uh-huh. And I think tonight kind of solidified who, I, who I'm supporting and, uh, and why I'm supporting them. Um, and I am supporting... I am choosing to support uh, Joe Biden for president. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and it's, it's pretty clear. Um, why why is that? Now why is that? So you know, I think we're kind of you know looking at the semantics of it. We're looking at oh well, he's just old and fragile. Well, they're both. First off, they're both old. Uh, and oh, as, as Biden on. said tonight, come on, come, on, come on. Trump is just three years younger than uh than than Joe Biden. This is. Desperation uh, but, talk. This is desperation on. talk. Go ahead. Go but, ahead. But, but tonight, I think when it, when we talk Trump about the merits old of two, Trump we, old too, come on, that's this is desperation. We, when Go we ahead. talk about the merits of what was spoken on tonight, I think one candidate was very clear in his policy and what he plans to do for the American people. And I think Joe Biden clearly was able to articulate what he wanted to do, regardless of him stuttering. People, what, what, people what did he want to do? Joe Biden okay, okay, has always had a do? stuttering problem. Joe Biden has always had a stuttering problem. For 40, no. 50 years, he's had a stuttering problem. He has this was beyond it. This times. wasn't even stubborn. No, no, this was mumbling. Mumbling and bumbling. This right, was. He also a had a cold problem. tonight too. He also oh, had a cold tonight. Okay, no, but stop, stop. Yeah, but stop. no, he but, didn't but have a cold. On. Don't there, blame there was this. Several times. Don't blame right? this there, on the there cold. Was several Don't do times. This. There were several do times when Trump was asked questions and he Don't never answered the question. All right. All these Democratic there, shields, boy, they no, trying no, no. to earn your pennies. It's not even about being a shield. I don't necessarily. It I'm is. An Y'all Democratic I'm not shields even are trying to. You when weren't I, when undecided. I vote in Colorado, you're a Democrat. Stop, 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 stop. You're not a. You're not undecided. You're a Democratic shield. That's the talking point they tried to to put down. They must have sent y'all the emails to say, "Well, Biden had a cold. He wasn't sniffling or coughing or nothing." He didn't have a cold. He's senile right now. He's done. He's baked. He's baked. And y'all know it. Come on, spin it some more. Let me hear some of this bull crap. Spin yeah, it some when more. I got my, when I got my ballot in Colorado last mm-hmm. week, uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, I received both a Democrat and Republican ballot because I'm an, I'm an unaffiliated voter. I'm not registered. No, no, you're, you're a Democratic party. shield. Stop it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I mean, that's your opinion. That's cool. That, uh-huh. Um, You've you're been a very Democrat opinionated. That's totally Moving fine. in the- Yes, all go right, ahead. So, let's let's but, hear the spin. But tonight, when it came to child care, all right, uh, Biden mentioned how he, you know, has has actively worked to ensure the child ta- uh, child care tax credit that many black families have been able to enjoy over the past oh, few years God. when they filed their taxes. All right, oh, God. Joe Biden. I mean, I'm sorry, Trump was asked four times his stance on child care. The same question. Not one time did he mention child care or answer the question. All right? This is reach. This is such a reach. Boy, man, this, let, this is desperate. It's not a reach. It's the truth. See, this is desperate. Don't hey, thank you. I don't want to hear desperate babble. This is, man, yeah, this, this is desperation. Oh, God. This is desperation, family. Desperation, desperation, desperation. Boy, these Democratic shields are in panic mode. T.S. Giselle, this is another Democratic shill. T.S. Giselle, let's hear some of your shilling. All right. T.S. Giselle, let me hear you spin this too. Let's hear you spin it. T.S. Giselle, this is from the the Billy Porter vote. All right. T.S. Giselle, hop on. Got a lot of bands, got a lot of Chanel on me. <laughs> All right, so let's You know, it was my birth. Hold on, you know, it was my birthday. Um, Thomas Sotomayor, you can cash at me. Um, thanks for the cash apps that I got when I announced my birthday last week. Um, T.S. Chazelle, Every Girl's Dream, Every Man's Fantasy. Okay, let's be serious. All right, um, <laughs> okay, yeah, Tommy, cash at me. Um, okay, no, stop trying to flirt with me. Let's okay, okay, ahead. okay. I'm being serious. Okay. Because um, I'm an unwavering Democratic voter, so I'm I never going to I'm never gonna leave the quote-unquote Democratic plantation. I'm a, a big advocate for Joe Biden because he's been very loyal to my community, the trans community, the LGBT yes, he community. Yes, and he so, so we understand this the vote, this the vote was never going to decide anything for me. Now... I'm a very honest person. Mm-hmm. And so was this the strongest performance from Joseph? It wasn't. Right. Um, he was very no, lethargic. being honest. At least you're being honest. He was very lethargic. Um, Trump continuously, as he always does, lied throughout the debate. 
it was very um, dissatisfying not to see Joe more prepared to rebuttal the, the dozens of lies that Trump told throughout this debate. Also very disheartening that CNN's moderation was horrendous. It was horrible. Well, well, was I never want to see people another. People keep saying Trump was. Lying. I never want to see another debate on CNN. The moderators were terrible. All um, right. But all right. all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because but yeah, people talking about Trump was lying. Biden was lying too. Tommy, hop on, brother. Hop on. We got Tommy. Man, I'm glad you cutting some of these people off. Man, just to watch these people lie. The the moderation now was a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean they desperate. It's desperate right now, man. Your, your, your boy came up there and said, "I'm right, from Arizona," and and they never complained about that, sir. I lived in Arizona for seven years. They've been complaining about that, and it got worse. They've been talking about immigration, and immigration has been hurting black folks. And if you say you're down for black folks, you should not be wanting all these undocumented workers coming in, taking jobs and taking benefits away from black folks. That should never be something to argue. I still remember when he said build a damn wall and black folks called it racist. How is it racist that they're building a wall to keep other people out? Dummy. It makes no sense. You jumped on that bandwagon and then see where it took you. Tonight, you watched a man not be able to complete sentences. This man said that he had a conversation with dead people from World War One. What the hell you think he going to lead us into? The Battle of the Bulge? What is he going to lead us to? The War of 1812? What are we talking about? This is a stupid thing to even have this damn conversation, Tyreek. I'm so damn mad I had to take my Metamucil earlier. You hear me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, people, y'all, your Democratic shields, uh, y'all can't be you know, trying to lie and spin this. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all can't spin this. Don't try to spin this. And I'm, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not. I'm so nonpartisan. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a policy based voter. I be, I vote on policy. Whoever has the policy that represents me, that's who I'm going with. I don't, I'm not a Democrat, Republican, or nothing. Not an independent. I am a issues-based voter. And my issue is reparations. Whoever has a check, that's who's gonna get a vote. We got um um speaking of the musty tether vote, we got Johnny Somali. Johnny Somali, hop hop in, sir. We got Johnny Somali in here. Hop in, Johnny Somali. All right, Johnny Somali, hop in. That was an amazing debate. I love to see Biden dig his own grave. That mm -hmm. senile piece of shit. I hate how he lied about he helped the black community. What has he done for the black community in the last three and a half years? I don't know. I haven't nothing. Seen one, Absolutely one nothing. policy, one program at all. Absolutely nothing. But what he did, he led a bunch of your tethered family over here, though. He did do that. So you should be happy for that. No, nah, that was Bill Clinton. That was Bill Clinton. I'm going to follow in his footsteps one day. Yeah, 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 but but Biden is doing it now. Biden has opened up the floodgates and let a bunch of folks over here. And you know, so, what's the choice now? Do we vote for Trump, Tariq? What do you say to the FBI? I, I hey man, I'm still waiting on somebody to come through with some tangibles. I'm still waiting. I, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to come through with some tangibles for foundational Black Americans. I'm not lie. Obama didn't do much for Black Americans either. What do you give us? No, Obama he did. Obama no, he did. What the fuck you give us? No, he did. When the 2008, when the market crashed, what the fuck you give people? Oh, he just let a bunch of musty tethers over here, man. He let your family over here, and bam, here we are. And I voted for Obama twice. Yeah. I'm very disgruntled with it. Obama used to follow me. I, I was I went in on him so hard he unfollowed my ass. <laughs> he, he unfollowed me. He said, "Fuck him." <laughs> You know, now I, I even put money on one of the campaigns. I, that's why I was, you know, hoping that he was going to come through with it. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. This little old musty tether, he didn't do nothing. I need my money back, Obama. Y'all give me my damn paper back. Yeah. That's how I am with it. Come on, everybody. We up in here. We almost got 1,400 people in this room in the middle of the night. Um, Infinite. Hop on Infinite. Then we're going to get grinds. Infinite, Infinite and grinds. Where is Tariq getting all that money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tariq, yeah, brother. Uh, not too much, brother. One, I just want to give you uh, praise for uh, microphone check. I haven't checked it out yet, but Thank I know you. If you said it's coming back to the theater, so I'm going to try to check it out here in Chicago. Yes, it will be in Chicago. Um, I forgot the name. It'll be at Landmark Theater. Yeah. Um, the week 
July 19th. But go ahead, okay. bro. Definitely going to check it out. I, you know I put my whole family on you, man. So my sister, man. everybody, buy your stuff, everything. I got to show you some pictures sometime. But tonight's debate um, was embarrassing, I think, overall for just America in general. I don't think anybody could have yeah. watched it. I don't think anybody could have watched it and been like, yeah, that's my man on either side. They both are, they're both trash. Like, yeah. that's uh, Biden is is one like at least three feet into the ground right now. He's halfway gone. Like, why is he a candidate? And and, and Trump is just Trump. He you know he sit there he lies and all that whatever. Biden lies. I don't even know if Biden lies so much as he was just so mentally inept. He was just right. talking about things that didn't exist, and right. you could barely hear the man. He was <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it yeah. was yeah. embarrassing. And you brought up a very good point, brother. This was embarrassing for the country. This was embarrassing for the country. Family, look, the world is looking at this. You know, the world looking at the president looking weak like this. You understand? The president, I mean, Biden is a sitting president right now, and he's looking real weak and frail and incompetent. So, hell, what if somebody in Al Qaeda is somewhere doing the Birdman hand rub? Like, hey, wait a minute. These dudes are, hey, they, they soft right now. Some of the enemies of the United States might be looking like, hey, man, these people might be lunch right now. We can't have weak leadership up here like that. You understand? When they see that the public ain't really supporting the Democrats like that, especially their base, when you see the the so-called democratic base, which are foundational black Americans. We're the base of the democratic party. We're the ones who have supported them consistently the most, and we ain't rocking with them. They see that. You understand? So people might start plotting and planning. We got to really look at the big picture here. That wasn't a good look at all. Seeing Biden up there flubbing around. That's why the Democrats are talking about getting him out of office ahead of the damn election. That's how bad it is. Man, well, watch the conversations tomorrow. These people are having emergency meetings tonight. I'm going to get um Grind, and then I'm going to get Isan. Grind's then Isan on. What's up, Brother Tariq? How you doing, Grinds? I'm good, and yourself? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? Very good. Um, First of all, <clears throat> let me apologize. This is the last time I was on stage uh, when I was dragging somebody for filth, and I did go a little overboard with the uh, lang with the language, so I apologize for that. Uh, I want this respect the stage. Uh, but as far as what's going on tonight, like, man, spe speaking of dragging somebody for filth, uh, Biden got dragged for filth tonight by Trump. Yes, he did. Like, yes, he by did. a long shot. There's no... Um, Explaining your way, explaining your way out of this. Um, I was waiting on Van Jones to start boo hooing again, like last time. Yeah. Um, as far as like the different things um, that they're trying to use, like they're they're going to be using like all like uh, a few people I've heard you and heard people, other people say they're going to use all the Hail Mary passes. You know, Black Americans, of course, we gotta you know uh, be ten toes uh, down all the time. You know, standing on truth, standing on business, and keep pushing for uh, tangibles, and uh, not allow ourselves to be you know tricked or brainwashed with any word, any um, trick bag wording or anything like that. As far as our needs, because they're gonna be doing everything they can. All the shields. I'm already seeing the shields panicking. Like I seen Joy Reid panicking i seen even uh kumala uh uh, uh panicking earlier it's ridiculous yeah. but yeah that's all i'm gonna land my man i appreciate you brother yes sir, uh, too. get um isan in here well, what's up my guys uh my name is ishan jordan i am a congress in the republican primary of florida's 14th district okay um i just saw the uh the debate it was hilarious biden got cooked so hard Re that guy got cooked like well done steak, like the chewy kind. You can't, you can't eat. You know, it's like useless steak that you got to throw away because it got cooked too hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he got, bro. He got cooked so hard that CNN was making fun of him. I, I, I was looking at the betting sites, and he dropped fourteen points in the betting sites for his, you know, him, his, him able to win oh, wow. right after the, you know, the, the debate. So in the Repu funny thing is, oh, the Republicans right now they doing a, a victory lap already. I know they're probably doing victory laps already. Oh, yeah, bro. For sure. Yeah. For sure. But on the other hand, we shouldn't get too, we shouldn't get too excited because we know that he's going to replace him. Yeah. You know, on the betting sites, actually, uh, Gavin Newsom's up 14, uh, Gavin Newsom's up seven points. 
to uh, predict and to predict it to win. I think he was like like seven. Yeah. Like, he was at like yeah, they're about to do ten percent. I was at seven. So yeah, your boy. Look, they're about to pull Gavin Newsom out. They're about to put him out here and really polish him up and really, really um, do some PR work on him and really pump him up. So is your boy Trump ready for the Gavin Newsom thing? And you know, I don't think I don't think the Trump that we saw today was the, Trump, the badass Trump from the 26, 2016 you know run. You know, he was good. He had a couple of good moments, like the golf moment, one of the funniest moments. Um, and then the one time when he's like, "I don't know what you said," <laughs> that was right. pretty funny too. But uh, right. I think okay, your phone, your phone is your phone is breaking up, brother. I, I gotta get uh, yeah, your phone is your phone is real janky. Let's get my brother Black Alpha in the building. I'm good, Black Alpha. How are you, sir? Brother, I'm doing good. Watching this embarrassment of a debate tonight. Yeah. Um, sad. I was just watching Sky News over in the UK, and they all saying Biden need to go to a nursing home. <laughs> so, Man. Man. <laughs> did you see the look on his face, brother? Like, he didn't even look like he knew where he was at. Right, man. It's, it's a bad look. That was a bad look, brother. Man, I seen um. Right now, brother, Roland Martin's on his little show right now, and Roland's cussing out his whole staff right now because a lot oh. of people are saying, that, yeah, he mad. I mean, he beep beeping all over the place, brother. Mad as hell, and they're talking about Biden dropping out. Yeah, yeah, he's going to have to... They, Biden, they might have him out by Monday, man. They <laughs> they, they got to do something. They're scrambling right now. They're going to have Biden out probably by this Monday and have Gavin Newsom do the thing. Thank you so much, brother. Man, it's bad. Uh, yeah, I know Roland is probably cursing up a storm right now. But he, 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 y'all stupid fools. He, 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 he. Yeah, he's probably just going off. But yeah, man, listen, family, by Monday, they might have Biden up out of here. By Monday, they might have Gavin Newsom out here doing his thing. Yeah, because they this was horrible. This was uh, they can't they, they can't bring Biden back out in public after this. For real, they can't bring Biden back out to do no more speeches and no more campaign um, runs after this fiasco. Y you understand? This is about to be very interesting. This is going to be very, very interesting. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get um that girl, Casey. Let's get that girl, Casey, in the building. That girl, Casey. All right. What's up, Casey? Um, I was just watching the debate earlier and everything and, you know, just wanted to come up and speak about it. But I don't know. I mean, everybody's saying it looks really bad for America, but I just think that America's been looking pretty bad anyway, considering the fact that we were owned by the Israel lobby and nobody wants to talk about it. So I think it's just the craziest thing. How do you feel about that? Well, no, the, uh, the optics of what we saw. See, the thing is, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of unhidden or, or hidden hands that's behind the scenes. But optics are very important. And the optics of us to the global community now with our sitting president fumbling and stumbling and stammering like that, that's a horrible look. Not a good look at all. And it I'm, makes us look, look vulnerable. Go ahead, Casey. My bad. Oh, but all this, I didn't mean to like um, cut you off. But he didn't look any different to me than before when everybody went and voted for him uh, last, you know, the last time in 2020. I mean, I, he was doing all of that, like walking slow, walking funny, the quote gaffes and everything else. I mean, me personally, I, I, he's a little worse, but I thought he looked he, pretty bad. When, you know, huh? he was a lot. It, it, it was bad. He was a lot worse. What he was doing tonight. Um, he was barely coherent. It, it was way worse. He's way worse than what he was um, the last debate, the last election. Way different. He's down bad. So, yeah, we just got to be very honest about it. And look, the Democrats, they know what it is. They can't even spin this no more. So, again, they're about to do some kind of Hail Mary. Look like they're about to get Gavin Newsom up. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get Michelle Obama to be a damn vice president running mate. They're desperate right now. They got to do something big to to cover up this fiasco. They got to bury this. You understand? 
And, and if I could just say one more thing. So, like, let me ask you, if, you, if they get Gavin Newsom, you think a bunch of black folk are going to go run off and vote now for Gavin Newsom because, like, this is something different? I mean, do we not see through what no, they're no. doing? Oh, no, no, no. But, no, just to have somebody reputable, you know, because this is a bad look for the Democratic Party and just all of us. But just to have somebody reputable, somebody salvageable, because right now, if Biden tries to go up against Trump, Trump is, you know, that's going to be a landslide. If, you know, they go the distance to um, November, that's going to be a landslide. So they got to do something. They got to do something. And then, look, I'm, Gavin Newsom, even though he's talking about reparations and all that, he, he, they haven't cut those damn checks yet. So we're not really on the Gavin Newsom train either. But again, we're trying to see what they're going to do. So I mean, but the, the last, I promise, I swear to God, I promise this last one for real. But like, they're not, how could they cut them checks? But again, all we keep doing is like doing everything for Israel. Like, we're going to get ready to go to war for Israel pretty soon. And everything that's going on in the Middle East, like, are we paying attention to that? Like, because like, that's, that's, that's a huge problem. You know, the Israel lobby on our elected officials that don't they're, answer to us. For Israel didn't stop them from cutting the check for the Ukrainians. Them cutting the check for Israel didn't stop them from cutting checks from them damn illegal immigrants coming over here and they giving them debit cards and all types of tangible. So yeah, they can they can cut two checks. They can cut a check for Israel and a check for us. All right. Sad it doesn't work like that, but I mean they they, they better make it work like that if they want to get elected. So right. we know it's not gonna work like that. Like the, the Jewish hey. lobby takes over. That's what happens. I don't, I don't even the, the Jewish lobby and all of that. These people cut checks for everybody. They cut checks for everybody except us. So I ain't going for that. They can cut checks for us too. All right. Thank you so much, dear. I don't do all that. The Jewish lobby. Yeah, they cut. I don't deflect into the Jewish thing. That that's a major deflection. Them being with Jewish lobbyers and all of that, that don't stop them from cutting these checks and these debit cards for these damn other people. I don't want to hear that. When it comes to us getting something, all of a sudden, well, it's the Jews and uh, whatever. Dr. Roboto. Roboto. What's up, brother Tariq? Do, do you mind if I segue to local politics real quick? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay, are you familiar with, with the mayor of Rochester, New York? What's going on with her? Because if no. not, I just... Okay, so we had a mayor, lovely Warren, right? On African American woman, right? FBA. So she, her husband was like one of the kingpins of Rochester. So he gets arrested. She gets fired from mayor. Now she's running for city court judge, right? So I was just wondering, like, what, like not even what you think about that, but like, isn't that like ironic like how how is she running for city court when her husband just got arrested as being the kingpin of rochester she gets fired and now she's running for city court and and th the last part is she's running against uh jirasi jirasi his dad is a judge right supreme supreme court judge in rochester now he ended up lying saying that the biggest black union um endorsed him and it was a lie scrubbed it from the website and everything so she might actually win. So I just wanted to see what you thought about that, if you're not familiar with that. Not familiar with none of that, brother. So, yeah, if you talk, you're talking about a local thing that only y'all know locally. So, yeah, that doesn't – I'm completely unaware of any of that because I'm not in that area, brother. All right. Y'all right, kind of stick to the topic. That was, you know. Um, let's get Kyle in here. Kyle? Mr. Tariq, great How pleasure. You I'm fantastic. Thank you. What a wild day. Yes, and it was. I wanted to say I actually saw Gavin Newsom today uh, in Atlanta, uh, heading on his way to the way to the debate. So he was there. He's you know right there in the wings. And you know one name I've I've been listening here for maybe I don't know twenty minutes, and I just wanted to get kind of your thoughts about you know there's another man in this race. His name's Kennedy. Some are calling him the Remy. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy is in the mix. Um, um. I don't know. I, I, I've been corresponding with his his staff. They've been reaching out to me. Um, he's kind of he'll talk about reparations and then kind of flip flop on it a little bit. That's why he hasn't really solidified a, a strong black base. He's been kind of flip floppy on the reparations thing. Um, Kennedy and their people, they wanted me to do something with them. They wanted me to do some event with them. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah I was doing the rally for reparations. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not really trying to be out here doing photo ops if people ain't trying to break bread and cut checks for the family. So that's what I'm on right now. So right. I mean, I think before we get we, before we get to straight cutting checks, I think we need to talk about 
what kind of solutions we want to we want to create to create a strong America and strong communities and resilient resilient citizenry, right? Um, yeah, that's going to start with giving us the proper compensation of a debt that's owed as foundational Black Americans. They got to get that straight. Um, we've been disenfranchised. We've been mistreated. Our resources have been maldistributed long enough. So it's time to make right on America's original sin. And this thing is going to be a train wreck until that is rectified. Right. I feel you. I feel, mm-hmm. I feel you. And I, and I, and I don't think like, you know, as a, as I'll just say as a community, you're alone either. Like, you know, we're, we're seeing across many different ethnicities, like, horrid treatment from the the system that has gotten us to where we are now to where we're listening to two elder children arguing and bickering about who's got a better golf game uh like tonight was tonight was sad and i'd encourage everybody to check out the real debate.com which was bobby they 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 clipped he answered all the same questions that they asked and uh, had five million views too, so it's it's he's he's on the stage, guys, and he's listening too. And and the, the, this is a grassroots community, and it's about action. So if you want to participate and be involved and and make the case, and more than just making the case for just like straight, like how does the check cutting look? How does that work? Oh what, no, it's what, not what, is the, what, what is the path? Oh no, no, it's very easy. We already got everything worked out. This is so easy. It's a piece of cake. We already got who the checks are going to go to, how you're going to determine who's eligible. Um, All of that is already worked out. We're going to do it the same way they do with some of the red Native American tribes. We're going to cut the checks, give land grants, uh, possible tax-free status. We can throw some casinos in there, but we're going to start off with the checks first. Um, And we're going to do that for the foundational Black Americans, and you're going to show how you're eligible if you can trace your lineage back to the 1870 census. In fact, I'm going to get a team of people to start doing data entry so that we can already have all of the freedmen listed and all of the colored people and the Negroes that were listed on that census form. We'll already have that in the database so we can just streamline it so the checks can come a little faster. So, yes, it's going to be done and we're going to make it happen. And it should happen because this country is looking a mess right now. We got to do right by foundational black Americans so that these politicians don't have to be out here looking crazy so that we can boost this economy. We're going to save this country as foundational black Americans. Once we get our checks that's owed to us, we're going to stimulate this economy. People are going to get back out here and, and enjoy some of the fruits of our our economy that we stimulate. We're going to um, encourage and uphold businesses. We are so resilient as foundational Black Americans. We are deprived of resources and we still create opportunities. Just imagine if we get the proper compensation, all of the opportunities that we're going to create for the whole country. We are going to make, as foundational Black Americans, we will make America great again after we get the reparations checks. Right? I think I mean I I absolutely agree, and I think you can you can do with the reparations checks. I think you guys can do without the reparations checks as well. No, we can't make it great without them checks. We got to get the checks before. Got we make it. Okay, okay. We gonna okay. we gonna let this thing. We'll let we'll let them crash and burn like we letting them do tonight. We'll let. Nah, them, I mean that's yeah. like yeah, but like it's it's been it's been a full fledged assault from like so many sides, and it, it goes back a long long time. But I mean the current the current attack on <laughs> on the entire populace is relentless and it and it you know there there's so much strength and resilience and i feel everything you're saying you have all the power within and mm-hmm. let let and you, like you can do it no matter what you know sometimes you get lemons you got to make lemonade right <laughs> Yeah, well, it's time for us to have a lemon store. We don't want to make lemonade no more. We need a lemon store. We got the lemons. We need to get... Heck, heck uh, we, yeah. Right. Heck, yeah. We need the lemon Man. store. So we need to get what's owed to us as foundation for Black Americans. That needs to be rectified. But thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much. We don't have to do the right thing, man. It's looking bad. When, if they give reparations and say, hey, look, we, we are making right the original sin that we committed. We're going to do right by these foundational Black right. Americans. And then in turn, we're going to support these politicians and we're going to make the society and the economy robust. Hello, nice. who, who, who's talking over me? Who is this? 
Hello? Hello? Okay, don't. Hey, hey. Is this Al Qaeda? Hey, calm down now. This Al Qaeda is already trying to turn up. Hey, look, don't don't you start. They already see Joe Biden looking weak, so they're already trying to plan something. Is this Al Qaeda? Okay, don't you start. All right. All right, we don't want y'all to, to start packing bombs on or nothing like that. Let me get you out of here. Okay, they already talking about, me, 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 me. they already getting started. Okay, see, this is what I'm talking about. We can't have the president out here looking weak and crazy. We got Al-Qaeda calling up right now, um, trying to book a flight, a one-way flight over here. All right, so we got to watch out. All right, they already doing the call. So this is why we can't have our... Um, society looking crazy like this, looking crazy right now. It's time to do the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to do right by foundational black Americans. We look insane right now. Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to get on. How many people we got in here? We got almost 1,500 people in the middle of the night. We are in here heavy. Let's get American Patriot in the building. And then we'll get, um, who else? The American Patriot in the building. American Patriot in the building. All right. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, family? Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, what's on So I just let you know, I'm, I'm a full-fledged Trump supporter. Foundation okay. no black American. Okay. Uh, but my strategy with supporting Trump is punishing the Democrats. See, okay. I feel like if we start swaying to the Republican Party, punish the Democrats, then, you know, years from now, future elections, uh, they will come to the table with reparations. I think we have to, like, sit the Democrats down and spank them a few election cycles. And then also, too, I do like Trump's policies as far as uh, closing the border, focusing on domestic issues. Um, that benefits us, good trade deals. Okay. And I think, uh, you know, that's why I support Trump. And my whole strategy is to just punish the Democrats for eight years. And I got a feeling the rest of them will start coming back and saying, hey, let's get this reparations to us because we want their vote back. But as long as we keep voting for them, they're not going to give us reparations. Clyburn and them boys, they're not going to do it. Right. So, well, I'm not supporting them. Yeah, all of this, just support them, and then hopefully we'll get a reparations check. No. And that's why I'm not really supporting, you know, Trump either, because Trump has not, you know, he ain't cut no check either. And he's doing the, yeah, I, I made the, the economy good for black people. I gave to HBCUs. That's not enough. And a lot of white people go to HBCUs and Hispanics go to HBCUs. And basically, you know, that's like, you know, you're giving money to a white bank to a certain degree, you know. You cut the checks to us directly. All right. Coriza. Corissa. Corissa. Hi. Hi. I'm fine. I'm What's from Atlanta. Your, your little old yes. country. Where are you from, by the way? Country is here. From. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. There you go. How are you doing, dear? I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm one of those Grady babies. Yo I'm Lord. <laughs> I can hear it. Country is damn hell. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind? <laughs> but yes, I um I looked at the debate, me and my husband or whatever, and yeah, Biden looked crazy. He was standing with his eyes open, mouth all wide open. I was hoping he had some water Ugh. because it looked like his mouth was dry. Yeah. He was, but this time he was saying that he wasn't going to vote for neither of them because I guess Biden looked too crazy for him. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time, I knew my mom, my grandmother, she voted for Obama that first time. Yeah. And then when he passed that stuff for the gay stuff, he was like, um, she was like that she wasn't going to vote for him because she really disliked when he did did that. Yeah. 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 And, I, and again, I was a I was an Obama voter and Obama let us down so bad. So I'm cool. Obama soured me on the Democrats altogether. All uh, right, let's get on. Um, let's get another sister in here. Let's get um Huckleberry. Let's get Huckleberry in the building. All right, Huckleberry in the building. What's up, Huckleberry? How are you? What's up, Tariq? What's up, family? Listen, y'all. 
Are you not entertained? Uh -huh. Are you not entertained? When I tell you I was cracking up, Trump was eating him up. Like Trump is ignorant anyway. He's just super entertaining to me. Yeah. His whole pregnancy, you know, was um, not pregnancy. His whole presidency yeah. was hilarious um, because I just saw two demons on the screen. But whatever, it was it, super funny. It, but it um, Biden, oh my God! I don't know if anybody ever follows that redacted channel. They say a lot of little slick stuff, but <clears throat> they drop a lot of stuff. And I, I think about two or three weeks ago. I saw that they were saying that a lot of Democratic insiders, that they wasn't revealing their name, but were saying that they had already had plans to swap him out and they thought it would be swap, he would be swapped out for Gavin Newsom. So I'm not really surprised, but I just kind of watched to see how it would happen. And, and it didn't disappoint. It was hella entertaining. I was yeah. cracking up at both of them. Trump's between Trump's faces and hair and Biden's complete, like, he looks like a dementia patient. It's really sad, but yeah. that's. That's what they do. But I did want to say this, and I, I want to get your opinion on this. I feel like political influence is only checked with cultural influence because laws change all the time. People get swapped in and out, voted in, voted out, whatever. It's not hard to change a law, but it's super hard to change a culture. And we are the culture. Yes. Seriously. And and now we're I'm, I, I was thinking about this deeply on the, the other day and I was like, there's a reason why they keep trying to denigrate our culture and then give the positive parts of our culture away to other people. And it's a reason why all these tethers, be them melanated people or other or otherwise, keep trying to ingratiate themselves and, and, and take part in our culture or take. Um, credit for our culture and it's because we're the only people that's not invisible everybody else has been mentally conquered and subjugated and we haven't and we have the hearts and minds of the suspected white supremacist children and i wish our artists and the people in the public eye that really you know are the face of our culture globally i wish they project our message of reparations because if we make it cool we could have a children speaking in, uh, up for reparations for us because yes. we copy everything we do yes but indeed. That's all i wanted to say y'all good night i i really enjoyed this and i'm loving this space tonight thank you beloved and she brought up some good points um the dominant society their children look at what we do they look at the black grassroots they look at the hip-hop community they, they look at that that's why it's very important for the, the white corporate structure to put out certain images to dem denigrate our image. You understand? It's very important. And it's also very important for them to try to discredit some of us on the grassroots who influence the community in a positive way. Because I want y'all to understand, do y'all know a lot of white kids listen to me? They've always listened to me. A lot of white young folks listen to me. They used to buy my books all the time. When I did the Art of Magnet and all, it was white people who started to buy my books too. A lot of black people bought them. But then my books started crossing over. White people wanted to read that. And then they started emulating that. That's where the whole pickup artist community came. That, that all came from my books. All those dudes were studying my books. And this is why when I put out my books, some of y'all remember the, the Art of Mac and the Mac Within, they would have me on MTV and all of that. And the, the ratings would go through the roof with these shows because the white kids would like that. They like, you know, the, the, the concept of people having game and just somebody being, you know, just hip and up on game and up on certain issues and the street smart thing. They kind of try to live vicariously through that. That's why they are in these spaces all the time. Y'all notice Look, we got 1,500 people in here. A lot of white kids up in here, white, white young people. They're, that's why they're always calling up. Sometimes they'll be trolling, but they be trying to soak in game too. Blue collar, hop in, guy. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Mr. Nishi? How you doing? I'm good, Blue. Um, what, what state you in, bro? <clears throat> uh, New Jersey, New Jersey. Shout out to Jersey. So you're a, you're a patriot, son. You're, you're a Trump supporter, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you feel about this debate? 
I, you know, I kind of felt bad for Biden. I really did. You know, I mean, I know everybody likes to, you know, bash on the guy. I mean, I bash on him, too. But I kind of felt yeah. bad for him. It's like seeing your grandfather or your friend's grandfather is, you know, struggling. You, know? you did feel sorry. I did kind of feel a little pity for him. I will admit that. I did feel a little pinch of pity for him. It was looking that bad. It's yeah, it, 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 like just like the way he slurred and everything. It wasn't a good look, and I think they're going to remove him eventually. And all that talk about Michelle Obama, I don't see that happening. They'll probably throw yeah. in Gavin Newsom or one of the, you know, yes. somebody who, as a who, sacrificial who, lamb. Right. Who do you think would be Gavin's running mate? Who would be the VP if they had Gavin out? Because I think it's almost inevitable they're going to bring Gavin out. Who do you think would be his VP choice? Well, definitely won't be Kamala because uh, I think she's been a political liability for the Democrats. Uh, maybe like a Gretchen Whitmer or he's going to probably want a woman of color like that. Uh, that one chick. Uh, who, um, what? She, she was actually a better candidate than uh, Kamala, but she turned down the job. Uh, what's her name? Was it AOC? Uh, no, 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 definitely not. Um, Keisha Lance Bottoms of uh, Atlanta. She was oh. she was good. And, but she turned down the job. She didn't. She she had enough. You know, I, I don't even think she's in politics anymore. Yeah, that that, that, I, I, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that would kind of be interesting. All right, but thank you so much, Blue. I appreciate you. Yeah, I don't know Keisha Lance Bottom. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's get um, let's get my brother Maverick in. It's my partner. It's my brother Maverick from the Maverick Approach. What's up, brother Maverick? What up, brother? How you doing? How you doing? Good, man. How's the family doing? Good, man. Good. Everybody's good, man. So, yeah. Man, what do you think about this train wreck we saw tonight? Oh, man. This whole thing, it was one big setup. And, yeah, I, I, I almost felt bad for Biden, but then I remembered the Biden crime bill and all that yeah. shit he said about us being, you know, pretty much animals when kids are being mixed in with, you know— um, you know, white kids and whatnot. Yeah. Everybody has to do their research. Just look at what Biden has said about black people and everything he's done up until this point. And that kind of, you know, refreshed my memory. Like, ah, uh, you know what? I don't feel bad for you. Right. And you know what? Trump was spanking his ass with that. Trump was like, hey, Biden, you were the one calling black people super predators. That was you. Yeah. I couldn't say nothing. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah, he was spanking him on that. Yeah. And, and the thing is that it's the lesser of two evils. Right. Because even Trump said some stuff to where he was like, you know, uh, you know, the Hispanics or, or the immigrants are coming in and they're taking black jobs. Like, what is a, a, a black job? Like, what does right. that mean? Right. So all these different things like. But again, I look at results and you got to look at the four years for Trump. You look at the four years of Biden. Um, it's just. For one, it's, it's completely out of hand right now. And these last four years or last three and a half years under Biden is way like this. This country is really in trouble. But all in all, this is a setup. And yeah. make, make no state, mistake about it. This is a setup to where the, the DNC wanted to prop him up, Biden, to show how bad it is, remove him and then get a stronger opponent to go up against Trump because right now nobody's officially representing the, the Democrats and the Republicans. So there's enough time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I think Gavin Newsom, that's inevitable. Um, who do you think would be Gavin's running mate? Um, I don't even know, to be honest, it, it, it's, it's a coin toss, man. But and if you look into Gavin Newsom's history and who his family is, I mean, he's the nephew of Nancy Pelosi. So, you know, it, it could be, you know, him. I, I really think, you know, it's going to be somebody of that caliber. And, you know, he could, he could be the only person that's going to really go up against Trump at this point. Um, Michelle, Michelle Obama would be a good choice, but she said she's already not running. And um, I don't think they're going to play that card. But. They're going to need somebody strong enough to go up against Trump because it's it's inevitable at this yeah. point that Trump's going to win. Yes, indeed. My man, thank you so much, Brother Maverick. Thank For you sure. so much. Let's get, um, let me see. Let's get Bob Dope in the building. Yo, yo, what's up, Tarina? She, how you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. Bob Dope. What's on your mind, sir? Yo, man, I, I haven't had a chance to even watch the debate yet because I was working, but I'm just tuning into the space, man, and hearing everything that what everybody's saying, man, and it's hilarious. 
that uh that that Trump cooked Biden. I kind of knew that that's how it was going to go. Uh just <laughs> just cuz um you know Trump's actually like he's actually like a funny guy. So I just knew he was going to, you know, cook Biden on um you know in a debate. <clears throat> Yeah, man, it was it was bad. It was very bad, man, to see Biden get whooped like that, you mm -hmm. know. But mm -hmm. it is what it is, man. You know, the Biden has done some slick stuff to the black constituency, man. Yeah, you know, they are not going to try to spin um, the whole Biden thing. Let's get um. Speaking of Democratic shield tethers, we got Yasuki. Yasuki, hop on. This is a a tether. But go ahead, Yasuki. No, this is this is Devon. You know, you know this is Devon, but this, this is yeah, De right. Devon, De Devon, whatever L your name. Listen, listen. Okay, I want I want to talk to you about two things. First, I'm gonna talk to you about the uh, Biden and the, but then I'm gonna talk to you about the uh, one other thing about the uh, UFBA. Okay. Okay. What about us FBA? What about that? No, I, I okay. I have a, a couple of things about this, uh, but uh, first of all, okay, go ahead. I want go to, ahead. Go ahead, because it okay, takes you forever. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about Biden. Okay, uh, why, why do you, why do you, the, the reason you you don't support uh, Biden and you, you you don't support Trump, you say you say uh, that he bring the illegal immigrants in, you know you know, and you are afraid that uh, he will take your job. This, you sound you sound like a white supremacist. That, that's what you sound like. So you uh, because you you want to deny you want to deny and you call Yasuke, you call Obama Yasuki. I don't drive Uber. You're not gonna. I don't have an Uber job for you to take. So that no, nobody's afraid of that. I don't drive for Postmates. So that's I'm not afraid of that. But go ahead. Okay, this is why you call Obama a tether because he was the first uh, black president and he was not a uh, FBA because right. you are jealous and he was ineffective. Okay, okay, you are jealous. Uh, okay, what, now I'm I want to uh, jealous of a, a tether. I'm jealous of an ineffective tether of the of the success of the success of an African man. What he, he came to your Obama? His, uh, Obama's persona non grata. Obama's name is mud out here. That's why they don't even parade him around. Obama. No, Obama failed. Obama failed with black foundational black Americans. They can't even bring him out no more. So go ahead. You you think that the uh, FBA are all of a uh, black, sir? Of black listen, people, sir. Listen, you, you are a minority in black. Listen, um, um, Doogie, sir. I can bring out more people than Obama right now, sir. Do you know that? More people will come out to see me than Obama. More. We we had a rally in D.C. that drew more people than Obama can draw. But go ahead. Turn your mic on. I am muted. Listen, you say so. You think you can? Uh, if if Obama go for president today, he will he will become president again. And you 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 think you can do that? Sir, you sir, stop it. Listen, okay. I want to talk to you about uh, the other. You just saying stuff now. Okay, don't don't just no, get into. No, I want to talk to you about. You want to talk to me about what? Don't me. just be saying okay. stuff to be. You're just saying stuff now. I'm, no, not I don't saying, want... yeah, I'm saying what you were You're saying. You're just saying stuff. But go okay, ahead. Listen, listen, listen. I will, I will talk to you. Why Why do you, when you talk to the white supremacists the other day, why do you use African history when you talk to them? Why do, Why do you use African history if you don't claim Africa? Give me a, Give me an example of what you're talking about. When you say about the Egypt and the, the pyramids and all of, all of this, I didn't say I don't, I don't know, the other day. When did I? I didn't say nothing about no pyramids the other day. What are you talking about? Every time, every time you bring an example of a from history, uh, Mansa Musa for another example. You, when you when you say all all the others, all these things, you you bring African history. No, uh, I you didn't. don't bring a FBA well, history. No. Okay, you're a damn liar. You're, you're okay, a pathological then, liar. I have heard. I, I was debating the white supremacists the other day. I didn't talk about. I didn't say anything about African history when I was debating the white supremacists for the last few months. I always bring up foundational Black American history. So what are you talking about? Okay, I will give you another fact. Uh, when you say that Africans do not have a, the control in, the, in our country. Okay, you're not just gonna, listen, what you're not going to do is just keep sitting up here lying and then. No, 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 listen. listen you just listen. lie. God damn, you tethers just lie all the time. 
Will you tell us just stop lying all the time? You're just sitting here lying back to back, dude. Y'all like I to want to ask you a question, Tariq. It's okay. This is why we don't really tr like y'all in the mix. You just you don't be saying nothing. You're just sitting here lying back to back. Because that's what y'all do back home. Y'all sit there practicing your lies, and that's why I don't nobody have anything. And then y'all have to flee, and then you want to come over here lying. You're saying stuff. And then when you get debunked, then you change the subject. Oh, anyway, what did what did about black on black crime, nigga? Okay, you're just saying stuff. Don't nobody want to hear Musty tell the lies. All right. Let's get Amar Kadish. <clears throat> Amar Kadish in the building. Hey, how's it going? Amar Kadesh here. Uh Hebrew name. Kevin Faye is my regular name. But yeah, yes. uh, what I wanted to speak on is, you know, the politics in the sense of Republican and Democrat, they've made us a monolith of perpetual victimhood, knowing damn well what we've done in this country and lifting ourselves up by ourselves. And, you know, we're out here trying to get what is owed and we're seeing that they're not trying to do it. You know what I mean? So it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to eventually just take it. But one thing I was uh, also wanting to speak on is that there is a fact that within our community, we have a very high spending power. And when it comes to our sisters, they actually uh, spend more money than the military does on weapons. So what we can do with that is we could uh, come co together collectively. And in each black city, we could build uh, what we need, like hair salons, because that's where the most of the money goes to. And, you know, we be buying them from these Asians. If we build them for us, our, our sisters, they can go there. That money can go into them businesses. That them, that money can then go back into said communities. And that trillions and trillions of dollars that we giving out to these Asians can stay in our community. And that can be one of many possible ways where we can continue to build ourselves up off of the money that we just naturally give out to everybody. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Now, what we also got to remember, family, when we get these businesses, because we say, okay, let's get some businesses. Let's get businesses. Okay, what we got to do, we got to be in these positions locally because people say, well, you don't be voting. No, no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm all about voting locally. I always vote locally because that directly affects you. I'm all about voting locally. We got to get in those positions. We got to run for office and then run for these positions and make sure that we paper up the politicians so that when they get in office, they're going to do our bidding. We got to make sure they're going to do the right thing locally first. Because what happens is black people, we get our businesses and they get sabotaged on an administrative level, especially in places in California. They get us out here big time because what happens behind the scenes um, at the, the business permit office and all of these places, you got a bunch of non-black people working there. You dig? You got a bunch of these non-black people on the city council, and they sit here plotting against us. We saw how those white Hispanics were plotting against the black community out here in L.A. when that secret recording came out. And um, black businesses, I was driving down the street earlier today. I saw a bunch of taco stands all over the place. And all of those people who got these little taco stands, I know for a fact, all of their licenses and permits, you know, it ain't all up to par. But all of the black people who used to have their barbecue stands all on Crenshaw, they didn't got rid of them. They play the permit game with them. They give them a bunch of red tape so they can't get their little seller's permits. So they play these little behind the scenes games that sabotage us. So we got to be on top of that family. Out here in LA, there's a, um, a black owned gun store, Redstone Firearms. They're going to have to move guys. They're going to have to move out of the state because they're playing that little administrative game with them, throwing these extra permits on them. They got to pay certain fines and um, for certain documents and go through all of this red tape. They've been running them through the ringer. That's like the only, that's one of the few black owned gun stores in the country. And they were doing great business out here. Phenomenal business. We sent thousands of people to them. We've been promoting them for years and I've done so much good business with them. I mean, you go there, it's packed all the time. They saw a black gun store business that successful so they just start throwing red tape at them they do the same thing with us at the hidden history museum we had all of our that's why we we have to slow down on so many events that we have <clears throat> because we open this museum with grassroots funding and then it's packed 
every week. We got it popping. So then they start throwing these permits and fines and all of this paperwork at us. And we got to go through a bunch of red tape that we're still going through. They threw a bunch of red tape at us and we got to do a whole bunch of stuff. And, and then on top of that, they started sending damn undercover ops and agents and informants and all types of weird stuff. So yeah, we, we get that type of stuff. So we, we got to understand, um, how racism works and why we don't have these things. It's not that we don't have the mindset to go build it. The stuff that we build, it gets sabotaged and we have to get in front of the sabotaging. We got to get in front of that. You understand? That's very important. Let's get FBA goddess in the building. FBA goddess in the building. All right. FBA goddess, let me hear you, beloved. <clears throat> Excuse me. We at sis. FBA got us hop on, dear. Okay. All right. While well, waiting on her, because I don't want the game to be slowed down. Let's get um let's get Isaiah. Let's get Isaiah in the building, and then we'll get um Jamu. Isaiah or Jamu. All right. Hello. What's up, Isaiah? How are you, um, uh, Mr. Nasheed? How you doing? I'm good, sir. What's on your mind? Um, I want to speak about the debate. Um, now, me personally, I wasn't expecting a five star performance from Joe Biden in this debate, but I really expected much more than that. I, I, that was a complete disaster. Yes, it was. And another thing I get tired from a lot of from a lot of these Democrats is I get so sick and tired of them every time when there's election coming up, they always have to play the democracy card. Every time um, they have an election, they have to tell black people and people in general that vote for us to save democracy. Right. What, what type of democracy? Your version of democracy? It, it, it's, it's basically just one-sided. It's ba basically just hypocrisy. So that's one thing I wish they would quit doing. Stop right. it, Stop trying to guilt trip us with the whole democracy line. Right. And yeah, they, they do the boogeyman tactic. Oh, we better vote to keep Trump out. Man, don't be worrying about what Biden ain't giving us. I don't need nothing no how. I don't want nothing. I'm just glad to be here. Hell no. When I first did this broadcast tonight, we had one of these old Democratic dudes talking about, I, do, I don't want nothing. The black community, I don't need nothing. What what do black people want? Black people want something? I ain't heard nothing like that. Just plain, just oblivious for nothing. I said, brother, you, you don't know that black people want something? We want something tangible. What, 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 what is that? What do black people want? Tangible, what is that? I'm black, I don't want nothing. That Bojangles ass stuff is out, man. That's out the door. They got to come with it. That's why they're, hey, I, I don't mind the Democrats up here looking crazy right now. Good. Good. You should have been doing right by foundational black Americans. Now y'all out here looking stupid. If you were doing right by us, you wouldn't be out here so down bad. You dig? And you won't be able to spin this nonsense. You're not going to be able to spin it. Jamu, hop on, sir. Uh, peace to the family. Peace, big brother. Uh, I, just man, to, uh, I just wanted to... I just... Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say... I was listening to uh, Judge John on a podcast, and he said that uh, Obama was related to the Bushes, and I Googled it, and Obama's the Bushes' 10th cousin. So they put a one on us with the whole Obama thing. Y'all can Google that. And uh, I just want to thank you for everything. Peace. I'm out. Thank you so much. All right. Brother just wanted to give us a random tidbit. All right. That's cool. All right. Steve, hop on. And FBA got is You good now? I was trying to get you on, dear. Steve, hop on, man. 
All right, Steve. All right, while we're waiting on Steve, let's get inner band. Inner band. Let's get inner band in the house. All right, inner band. All right, while we're waiting on inner band, we can get Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Oh, yeah. I just want to say a few things. And yeah, first of all, like you said, and when it comes to like just the image, it looks bad because as a sitting president, you know, it looks bad when you can't even talk. You look bad. And they kept putting the camera on him even when Trump was talking. So, yeah, like he looked he kept looking at the corner. He, he didn't know what he was doing, where he was at. And I feel like this was him at his best because he probably they probably prepared him for weeks. Yeah. To this point. So I can't even imagine what his day to day is like. And like you were saying, imagine like the rest of the world, how they're seeing him, the people that are sending all these people through the border, Al Qaeda and whatever, like how they're seeing America and having a weak president plus a weak vice president, because the vice president is not even seen. She's not even present. Like she's right. unknown. She doesn't do anything. So because usually if the president is weak, sometimes the vice president is strong. Like Dick Cheney was a powerful vice president. Yes, he was. Yeah. And Richard Nixon was powerful. So having a weak pres uh, uh, president and a weak vice president makes America look bad and weak. Yeah. And Trump was sharp on point. Like even if people are not even looking at who was right, who was, who had the facts, they're just looking at who was speaking better, who was sharp, who had like, who was, just talking better and Trump won on that point. Yes, That's he did. What, what I wanted to say. And the second thing is, I don't know if any of them like did anything for black people or would do anything for black people. But even with that, I would say Trump probably has a better chance of winning black folk. But just the way he talks about America first by saying, why are we funding Ukraine? He criticizes all these things that, that Biden does. Why are we funding Ukraine? Why are we letting China win? on tariffs, why are we allowing all these people to come in and get free stuff before black Americans? Why are we allowing these people to get free housing and free health care? Yeah. Why are we allowing them to get social security? Like Biden does not even talk about these things. So I could I could just see Trump in the future maybe even saying, why don't we help black Americans? I'll do a trillion dollar economic package for black Americans. And that could be the end of the democratic oh, yeah. like, system for Ever and they'll never get any black votes forever after that. It's real so, talk, real just talk. Imagine that one statement like that. Yes, yeah, let, me, let me land your plane on that. And that's a that's a very good point, family. Listen, listen to the Trump administration. Trump is already winning now. If Trump wants to be locked down in history for real, for real, and also get that felony stain off of him, man. The smartest thing Trump could do is say, hey, let me put together a package, an economic package, specifically for foundational black Americans. Let me do something, let me word it specifically for them. Let me get something going on, an economic package just for foundational black Americans. That would crush the Democratic Party for the next 40 years. You understand what I'm saying? Not only that, that would he would be the next LBJ. He would have the legacy of Lyndon B. Johnson. He would go down in history. His name would shine through because we would pop our collar to him. And whoever we pop our collar to, you can't deny him. You see? We popped our collar to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln wasn't shit. Abraham Lincoln was a white supremacist too. But the thing is, those black maroons fought in the Civil War. That helped win the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln thanked them. And Abraham Lincoln said, okay, let me give y'all your freedom. Because that was the can the, the thing that that was the carrot that they were dangling. Because uh, the North, they were losing the Civil War. And you had black men and you had some freed black men and enslaved black men saying, hey, man, you know, we can help you win, but, you know, we'll have to get a little piece of that freedom. We ain't going to fight for, we ain't going to fight to get put back in slavery. If you want to beat these crackers, you know, throw a little freedom our way. Yeah. You see? But if Trump wants to bury the Democrats, man, if Trump says, 
Trump comes out tomorrow or Monday and says, hey, you know what? I, I got an economic package specifically for foundational Black Americans. We're not going to do the minority thing. We're not going to do the people of color. We're not going to do the the disenfranchised people. Let me make this economic package specifically for foundational Black Americans. Man, Trump would be all up in the building. He would get massive support. Massive. And the Democrats would be done. The only thing is you got to know how to balance that with Trump's white supremacist base. You see, he has to come up with a plan that wouldn't alienate his hardcore white supremacist base. Talk to them, white supremacists. Talk to them. Let them know what's happening. Let's get Bussy for Life. That's a hell of a name, man. Bussy for Life. What's going on? You want to turn your microphone on or you just wanted to come up here and show us what your name was? All right. Let's get Be Easy. His Bussy for Life is busy with T.S. Giselle over there. All right, Be Easy. What's going on? Be Easy? Be Easy. Turn your microphone on, sir. I cannot hear you. All right. You ain't saying nothing. All right, let's get um FBA God is back in the building. Where you at? Hold on. Wait, what am I doing here? All right, FBA God is hop on. <clears throat> Even I try to add people and they ain't saying nothing. Who did you call for? Who's is that? Bussy for life. Okay, Bussy for life is trying to get on and. He's going through some things. I think he's trying to make a couple of dollars real quick before he gets on. Um, just call back later, man. Get the money and don't let the money get you. All right? Because we know with that name what you got to do for some money. Let me get him out of here. Let him make those $30 and wash yourself when you're done. Let's get uh, FBA Goddess. You good, dear? Yeah, your ass is crazy. I believe this um, app is acting up. But anyway, um, did you know that E-40 and um, old Fat Joe is coming to Raleigh tomorrow with the convalescent van um, at, yeah. at noon? Um, they say that they're trying to garner the black vote using these washed up people. Um, I guess, you know, they're using Joe, so they um, sleepy Joe, so they might as well use him. But um, I'm going to try to see if I can get anywhere near it. Of course, you know, they won't let us, but I'm going to try to see if what I can get. But I just want to let you all know that part. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Dear. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. They got E-40 and Fat Joe. They been they love parading around Fat Joe, boy. Be easy. You good? All right, be easy. I got to get you out of here because you're not saying nothing. So we're going to get our sister Jessica, Jessica Allen in the building. Jessica? Hello, Jessica. Um, Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. All right. All right. Jessica ain't saying nothing. Jessica just wanted somebody to see, to see her new weave. She put her weave in her profile, and she just wants somebody to see she got her weave done. Sometimes people just do stuff to be seen. All right. Let me get a couple more people in here because I'm not going to be on here too, too long. Um, Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to speak. Let me try it that way. If you're ready to speak, raise your hand. If you are requested and you're ready to speak, raise your hand. Let's get L. Janelle in here. Let's get L. Janelle in the building. Oh, uh, Ellie Janelle? What's hey, up, Ellie? it's Elle Janelle. How are you doing? I'm good, Elle. How are you, dear? Nothing. Just got finished laughing at this crazy debate. Um, and I was also laughing at that guy saying Keisha Lance Bottom should go with Gavin Newsom. Could you imagine what the signs would say? Lord. <laughs> that is not, not going to work, buddy, from a marketing no, no. standpoint. But mm -hmm. I was in another room earlier, and we were kind of... Um, you know, talking about the policies, because I, I noticed how important marketing is in this, because people not really listening to Trump or Biden, they just saying 
Trump looked good, Biden looked like he about to fall over, which he was. Yeah. Yes. But there was one there was one part that I was like, this bothered me a lot about Trump, and I wanted to know what you thought about it when he started talking about the abortion. And it's not so much the abortion itself, but how he was kind of congratulating himself for making a more conservative Supreme Court because now things will go back to states' rights more so, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I like states' rights in some aspects, but I don't know that I would feel comfortable making everything states' rights. So I'm wondering, I want to ask you, do you think it's important to keep some things federal, you know, like, Abortion or like uh, Brown versus Board of Education or interracial marriage or things like that. Or do you think it would be kind of better to be like, well, if they want to have segregated schools in Mississippi, let them do that. It's states rights. Yeah, that's that's kind of a tricky thing. And again, the um, yeah, everything will will rise back up to the Supreme Court anyway. So there's only so much they're going to go or so far they're going to go with the whole states rights thing. And I know a lot of that pertains to the whole Roe versus Wade, the abortion situation. So that's kind of a tricky thing. But my, my thing is with us, we don't get no damn federal protections any damn way. You understand? So we're just, it's like, we already stuck here with the shit. So look, just give us some money. Give us a check because y'all put these laws that they don't enforce. So just give us a check. Give us some paper. Give us something tangible because y'all not enforcing nothing from the state or the federal. You understand? So let's get this money going so that we can start putting our own people in the mix. All right. Let me get one more call. Can I get one more? So, Because we do have a lot of people in here. And by the way, family, the, the movie that we have called Microphone Check, we got a phenomenal hip-hop film that's killing the game. It's going to be back in theaters around the country the week of July 19th. We're going to have the pre-sale tickets on the microphonecheck.com website um, by next week. But we need everybody to go hit that theater in your town. We're going to have it in um, D.C., L.A., Oakland, Chicago. I want to say St. Louis, um, New York, uh, Philadelphia, and some other cities. It's going to be a week-long run, so you'll be able to see it every day for the week. We need everybody to support that film. Take your friends, your buddies, if you have uh, schools or community groups, take them to go see this movie. It's a very important grassroots movie, and this is big for the culture, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Should we get one more? Shall we get one more? Raise your hand if we should get this one more call. Let me let, Let me see who's in here. Um, let me see. Raise your hand, guys. I want to get one more good call before I go. All right. I want to get some new people in here that we haven't had. I like new people. Um, Big Fox, ain't I have that? Thought I had you in here before. Uh, let me see. Uh, come on, raise your hand, guys. Let me see who we got. Uh, Babasala, I've had you in here several times. All right, let's get, um, let me see. Now people are bouncing all around. And by the way, go to rootworkstyle.com to get that rootwork deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Get that rootwork deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Very good deodorant. And by the way, the BET Awards is happening this weekend. I might go to the BET Awards. BET Awards happening this weekend. Shout out to that. I might have to fall through. You know, I'm trying to be around the black folks this weekend. I'm trying to be around the community. I want to see what's popping. Um, plus, I need to get out here promoting the movie. Let's get um, CS. What's your name, brother? CS C Swap. Let's get C Swap in the building. C Swap in the building. What's happening? Hey, what's up, man? I've been enjoying the chat. I have a question for you. Yes. I, I um 
So I was actually listening to an interview before the debate. I can't remember who it was with, but it was a black Republican. And I really enjoyed a lot of what he was saying. But he was asked about, you know, how black voters felt about, like, the Trump mugshot. And uh, he he didn't really he didn't really want to say the fact that that you know black people were treated unfairly in the justice system. Uh, so I guess I was just wondering why you feel that is. Why well, I feel what is you, you haven't really explained anything. You I don't know what you said. What's the question? So I felt like there was an opportunity there to say that there was like some camaraderie because, you know, he was unjustly, you know, charged with all these felonies. Right. And so I felt like he kind of missed an opportunity to point out the fact that uh, that black folks were, you know, also treated unfairly in the justice system. And that. So do you think. So do you think that black people felt a camaraderie because Trump had a, a mugshot? I don't know. That's the question I'm asking you is, do, do you think that was an opportunity, a missed opportunity to share with the American people that, that um, you know, that the justice system doesn't, doesn't treat everybody the same? Everybody knows that we, we get unfairly targeted by the, the entire system. Now let me now you, where are you from? Uh I'm from Denver originally. Okay, where's your family from? Uh my family is from all over really. What part of Europe are they from? Uh, uh, originally like well I'm a Jewish guy, so Russian okay. Russian Romania. Okay. So the thing is, the thing is, there's a narrative that a lot of the right wing think tanks tried to push to spin the Trump mugshot by saying, well, black folks want to support Trump because, you know, his mugshot makes him look more gangster or whatever. That was like a talking point that was coming from the, the white think tanks. And that was something to um, ingratiate themselves with the far right white supremacists. That's a talking point for them. That wasn't something that was supposed to be complimentary to black people. That was a backhanded compliment. You understand? That was a dig towards black society. Nobody black looked at Trump's mugshot and said, hey, he's one of us now. Nobody did that. And it's extremely racist to even believe that that's what, that would be our mindset. You understand? That was just some white supremacist fantasy nonsense. Um, black people are not really warming up to Trump like that. It's like, okay, Biden is just worse than Trump. We've seen Biden actually undermine us. So the thing that we look at Trump and we kind of look at him with like, um, hey, you know, you can't be that much worse. Trump is talking about immigration and talking about deporting people and getting some of these people out of our neighborhoods. That's the thing that makes people a little curious to hear what more Trump has to offer. But all of that mugshot nonsense, no, that's white supremacist fantasy talk. That makes sense? Yeah, I think that was a great explanation. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, y'all stop that. White people, y'all stop that nonsense. That's not a compliment. And, we, and, and you know it's not a compliment. You know it's an insult. And we know it's an insult. Y'all just think we're too dumb to realize we're, we're being insulted. Well, we, we know we're being insulted when you say that. When they were getting on Fox News, yeah, um, the black community is really warming up to Trump now that he has a mugshot. I mean, yeah. You know, because, you know, black people, they've been going to jail so much. So they, they kind of feel a camaraderie with Trump, don't you think? That's a diss. They're dissing us. And they're trying to make it seem like a compliment. And you know they're dissing us. You understand? We know when you're you are insulting us, just like when they parade Lizzo around and say, hey, look at the body positivity. Isn't it great that so many black women can just embrace their bodies no matter what? 
that's a diss. So they get behind closed doors and snicker. Uh, uh, did you see her fat ass? Oh, God, look at her, you know. That's a diss. Yeah. We know when we're being dissed. We know. We know this. All right. Let's get a lot of folks coming in. Media assassin. Media assassin in the building. Then we get Charlie. All right. Media assassin, hop on. Peace and blessings to you, brother. What's up, uh, man? I got a question and a comment. Uh, when it comes to reparations, you know, I've been listening to you for a while talking about reparations. We can't even get white America and the government to acknowledge the injustice of slavery. Never mind cut a check. You know, and as far as how do you calculate how do you calculate this? How do you put a figure on you know, the crimes committed against us when it comes to slavery, Jim Crow, and now our second wave of slavery, mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to talk about the antebellum slavery first, and we're going to tackle that. And we're going to put a price of $20 trillion on it to start off. They're going to distribute that the same way they distribute resources and funds to some of these red Native American tribes. The same exact way. There's already a template. So them acting like it's impossible is not impossible. Right. They can easily do it the same exact way. All right. Okay. And, and if I can say one more thing, I listen. I also have heard you say, you know, when it comes to Jews, you know, you kind of don't want to attack the issue, but Jews are collecting the biggest welfare check of, of any country from the United States. I mean, charity starts at home. We give, we cut checks to them, military might. I mean, they they, they have a top 10 military, military to read, right? They've well, been, they, well, they've been a self-contained unit since 1948. Everybody, yet we, everybody gets checks except us. Ukrainians get checks. The Jewish community, they get checks. Native Americans get checks. Illegal immigrants, they get checks. Everybody. So just singling out Jewish people. No, it, 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 I, I agree. I'm not saying singling them out, but right. it seems that when someone raises the issue of, of, of Jews and in, in, in their welfare check, you don't want to address it, though. I'm not going to single them out because they're not the only ones. Why would I single them out? And I can point to all of these other people. The point is, all of these non-black people get checks and we don't. I don't know what's with this thing where y'all want to go after Jewish people and then try to shame people for not joining the Jew bash train. <laughs> no, nah, it, 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 it's not that. But they also, along with this money, play an important role. They're America's, uh, you know, extension of America in the Middle East, they do our bidding so we don't have to. So their check is going, I mean, do you agree what's happening to the Palestinians? I don't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay, nah, but I didn't ask you that, bro. That I, ain't I, oh, a damn. That's, yeah. that ain't got, I, <laughs> I give a damn about what's going on over there. Oh, okay, so check this out. If you give your son or daughter 50 bucks, right? and they leave your home, you're not concerned about what they do with it? If it's my child, yeah. Boy, that was a weak correlation. Uh, that that was a very bad No, well, what, what I'm saying to you, I, I didn't think it was a weak correlation. What I'm saying to you is when we're, when we're funding them to do things that most of the country doesn't even agree with, right? I mean, I'm concerned where my tax dollars are going. Are you concerned that your tax dollars are going to illegal immigrants? Yes, sir. Because you know why, what? Why, then why just focus on the Jews? Why just focus on that? Why not focus on all of it? <laughs> okay, but see, I'm focusing with, with having this discussion on the Jews because, like I said, I just simply asked you a question. Why didn't you want to address the issue? And you said because you wasn't going to single them out. Okay, I got my answer. I wasn't okay. looking to bash anybody. I was just wondering why. You didn't want to address the issue. That's all. The issue is everybody's getting. Oh, okay, I, and, like and, I, and I get it, and I get right. it, bro. That's that's all I was looking for. Right. All right. Thank thank you so much, family. 
this plebiscite babble, and that's all that was, unnecessary plebiscite babble. When we're talking about all of the groups getting our resources, it's kind of redundant to just find one and just go on and on about that one group. All right. All of these groups are getting money at our expense. But them Jews, though, okay. Yeah, the Jews, some of the Jews are getting money and the Hispanics are getting money and Ukrainians are getting, yeah, a lot of them. Everybody's getting money except us. But let's focus on how come we ain't saying nothing about the Jews. All of them are getting money, sir. Cats want to get into some Illuminati plebiscite babble. Because what happens, y'all y'all sit up here and let these white supremacists trick you into taking your eyes off the ball. See, y'all be hanging around with these white supremacists and they be sitting up here, man, it's not white supremacy, it's really the Jews, dude. And then y'all plebiscite babbling buffoons go along with that. And then y'all start trying to parrot these white supremacist talking points like morons. That's what that's about. And then y'all start trying to plebiscite babble. If y'all don't stop. Charlie, hop on, Charlie. Hey, man. Hey, uh, dude, plebiscite, I got to Google that word, but I think I know what it means from context clues. But um, yeah, I'm a white dude. Um, I don't believe in white supremacy. I think it's all bullshit. I think it's further divide and conquer. And um, I do you don't, you, wait, wait, slow down. Let's slow down. Let's slow down, Charlie. Let's slow down. You say I, you don't believe in it? Hell no, bro. I was in the Navy, bro. I was in the military. Homie, we're all one. We're all one. This is oh, just further divide now. Charlie, Charlie, the thing is, white supremacy is real and it exists. And I don't know, bro. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about until I started listening for a minute. But right. it's the first time I, I told you. But hold on, but, hold on. But, Go ahead. We don't have the luxury as a white man. You have the luxury to dismiss white supremacy. We don't, as victims of white okay, supremacy. Okay, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Do you believe in reincarnation? Who yes. says I wasn't black in my last life? Like, maybe we all got to figure this out. Maybe this is about experience. Well, then, right now. <laughs> I don't life, know, but, man. Like, but, but in, it this just, life, it, in this life, we're dealing with white supremacy. So okay, okay. Right. I, 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 no, I, I get it, dude. I get you got a harder road, bro. Like, I, I'm driving on pavement. You're in gravel. I get it. Right. Uh-huh. But, at, but at the same time, bro, like, you're getting better lessons and experience than I am. Like, my shit. Oh, like, Lord. Dude, don't do that. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, our white supremacy is making you Negroes better. No, don't do that. Don't do the our Homie, that's not don't what I said. That. That. That's what that's where a lot of white supremacists use that argument. Our abuse has made you better. Is no, no, let's not go there, but go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Charlie. Oh, Lord. Charlie, you, you're already starting off flimsy. Go <laughs> no, ahead, yeah. Dude, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about. It's the first time I've ever seen one of these Lord, things. You're, joined. you're not doing well, Charlie, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Come on, Charlie. I'm following you now. We got to figure this out. Oh, Dude, Lord. like, no, but now I just read. Hey, yeah, the wasn't us, hey, we taught you how to pick cotton. We taught you. That's a not. Hey, hey. Brother, that's not, what I, that's not what I said. What I'm saying on, Charlie. No, is I'm by a, divided, but Charlie, by divided don't us, get, Charlie, don't let me go get your clan robe out the cleaners, Charlie. All oh, right? come on, bro. I, I, I'm a little fella. I, I, I thought you were still one of them robes. <laughs> come on, dude. I dated a black girl in college, dude. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying is you just buy it like. I, you, you, this is more like victim mentality. I, I, right, maybe I'm coming out. Victimized. Okay, thank you, Charlie. I don't want to hear Charlie is Mayo splaining. I don't want to hear Charlie Mayo splain. Oh goodness, we got this sister here, lovely sister, California Ivy. California Ivy, come on in, dear. Hi, Tariq. Hi, everyone. Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> how are you, dear? I'm great. Just listening in for a long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Um, you know, I wanted to make a comment about um, something that a previous caller said a few 
a while back about, yeah. you know, segregation and the board of education. And in my head, I've been going back and forth with it of like, okay, are we at the point where do we do segregate our education? Cause you know, we have that whole entire case where the Supreme court decided to, I believe it was like a, a venture capital company that was black owned, stopped the venture capital company from giving grants to uh, small businesses that were black female owned. And because of that, the reason, because the reason why they stopped it was simply because of DEI. And they said it was a form of um, um, segregation. It wasn't fair to, for them to um, leave out other minorities and right. other they race. Because ra they made it race-based. Exactly. And I use that same theory to, to our education system and our schooling now. And I'm, I'm, I'm big on accountability. And I, I, I'm really big on sometimes I feel like I, I know one of your callers back then said, you know, I'm glad that, you know, the Republicans have an might have an opportunity to give us back reparations because it proves to the Democrats like, you know, you had your chance and you messed that up. And I sometimes take that same theory about what happened with the Supreme Court onto the education system where it, is it is it a time where we hold the Board of Education accountable? for not putting in the, set, the same um, attention and reprimands and policies to make sure that all of our students are always up to, this, to the actual minimum level of what it takes to make sure America is always competitive. Because America and the United Kingdom, I believe, have like the lowest educational system. I was watching a Vice documentary about it a few months ago, and they said South Korea and Japan are like the top two, but like the United Kingdom and the United States were like the bottom of all the countries in the world. And, and, and I always think I'm like, okay, is segregation just another way of saying a cultural divide? Is it something where the culture of the haves versus the have nots instead of the segregation of like the blacks versus whites? And right. I wonder if that's a system that might actually work in today's era, especially with how kids are taking in information today. I think the, the old school way of a classroom with a chalkboard isn't maybe working for today's kids where they're always ingesting media that's like super fast with a short attention span. I was just thinking about like if, if that's something that might actually work, if that's a possibility for where we could go in the future. Well, let's go back to the, um, the Brown versus the Board of Education case. We're talking about education. Initially, a lot of folks don't know what that case was really about. It was about the Black schools getting financial resources. They wanted equal resources first that the white schools were getting, the black schools were being underfunded. So they were trying to get extra money, the same amount of money. What happened, the NAACP got involved and they said, hey, you know, don't worry about the money. Let's integrate the schools. Let's just have the black kids go to school with the white kids. And that's when the whole thing just kind of blew up in another direction. Right. So and so they thought the solution was to ship and bust the black kids to the white schools. But what would happen was the black kids got segregated within the white schools because they started to put the black kids in special education. Right. If any kind of behavioral problem or if they said, hey, I don't know what that question means. Whoops. Special ed. So they started to segregate the kids and then they built these suburbs and then bust the kid, white kids back out into the suburbs. So it was a whole cluster flop. And it, it, it goes back to the resources. We just mm -hmm. need the money. We're going That's right what I was going to say, because it might just be history repeating itself. I mean, if we, if we lack the resources, then what's to prove to say, you know, if this does get revoked again, you know, what is to say that black people are not banging at the door at the White House saying, hey, guys, we need the resources to make sure that our black kids stay competitive and up right. to par. Right. And that's why reparations, we're going right for the gusto. Let's give us the checks. Don't give us reparations in the form of education because you give me a check and I get my own education. Um, so, yeah, we need those reparations checks. Sister, my you're, you're my only thing about reparations <laughs> is I yeah. definitely believe that black people earn it. My only thing is like I'm, you know, I'm first generation American, so I understand my role and my place. Um, and I, I want to make sure that the people that get reparations are actually 100% deserve it. And it's just not a bunch of people just claiming and pronouncing their pronouns as African American. And it's actually people that are actually here, you know, like from this country, because I would hate for reparations just to be given to people that identify as Black just for monetary gain. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, where's your family from, by the way? Um, so my dad is Native American, but my mom is from Trinidad and my grandma's Cuban. So I have like a huge 
Caribbean roots from like Cuba, Belize, and Trinidad on my mom's side. But on my dad's side, he's Native American. Okay. Cool. Uh, Native American or foundational Black American? Which one? Uh, he's a uh, Cherokee, uh, grew up in South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is he a Black Cherokee? Yeah, Black Cherokee. Okay, got it. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, you're a producer. What what shows have you produced, dear? Uh, so much. Um, <laughs> Um, um, most of my producing started off in like live entertainment. So like the biggest shows that you've seen on broadcast television from like Idol, X Factor, Super Bowl, Oscars. Um, yeah. and then I do a lot of, um, fish out of water concept shows. Like I've done stuff for Cardi B. I did her show, um, yeah. a bunch of stuff for Meta and Snapchat. So kind of like oh. in the digital fun content space. I like to make content that makes people laugh and happy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you, you, were, you were CAA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they tried to sign me for a TV deal a long time ago. It was some, it was some, uh, it was some real weird stuff. All right, well, yeah. I have to talk. <laughs> it was weird, but but shout out to you, sis. I like to see you know folks doing their thing in the industry. So that's what's up. I All appreciate right, yeah. it. Thanks Thank for you. keeping the conversation going. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh man, heavy stuff, man. Heavy, heavy stuff. Great conversation tonight, man. Great conversation. All right, let me get up out of here, man. I've been here long enough. But hey, man, this debate was a monster. Joe Biden is looking bad. The Democrats are looking horrible right now. And they are scrambling. Tomorrow morning, y'all going to hear some splaining. Y'all about to hear splaining. They're going to try to spin it. They're going to have to get Gavin Newsom out here. You're about to see Gavin run out here. Um, they're going to get all of their Negro flunkies. The Congressional Black Caucus, they're going to be working overtime. Family, you're about to see these Twitter space rooms loaded with Democratic shills and tethers and paid ops who's going to try to discredit us, some of us influencers. You're about to see a lot of that. It's about to be on. These next few months are about to be very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, ma'am, go to Hidden historymuseum.com, speaking of education, and get the children's book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z, a phenomenal children's book called Hidden Heroes from A to Z at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Um, also, yeah, my birthday is coming up Monday, guys. My birthday is coming up, guys. I'd be forgetting. My birthday is coming up, so the bir birthday shout-outs and the birthday wishes, I welcome all of it. The cash app is dollar sign King Flex 818. A birthday blessing won't hurt nobody. Um, also, don't forget microphonecheck.com. We're going to keep you posted on when the, the pre sale tickets for the theaters are going up. It will be up at microphonecheck.com, and you got to go see that when it hits theaters, ladies and gentlemen. And also, Get your Rootwork deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. The best deodorant in the game right now. Rootworkstyle.com. Uh, cruising through in that black on black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be. Rowing up hella smart, removing aimlessly.